Dylan. Hey guys, uh, this is Alex and Spencer from the Crypto King. Say hi, Spencer. Yo. We're working with the brand new Bitmain uh, power supply. So these are being these are being um, uh, shipped with a lot of the S19s and a variety of the different Bitmain uh, ASICs right now. Uh, it's being used across a lot of their different line. Uh, and today we're going to show you how to use about two cents of parts to uh, unlock this board to its full capacity. It's going to allow you to use up to 7,000 watts um, off of this board. So then that's stock. We're not swapping any of the capacitors or anything else. We're simply just going to swap three resistors, technically two resistors and one zero resistance, uh, essentially to act as a jumper. Um, so if you guys enjoy, I hope this helps you. Spencer has gone ahead. He's taking the, this is one of the units that were immersed. We're doing some immersion right now. The, Spencer went ahead and took the power supply off of the S19J Pro. Um, he's, he's taken the screws out of the bottom, which allowed us to remove it. Um, although the fans and the power plug itself are still plugged in. You don't actually have to gut the whole unit to accomplish this. Um, what we're gonna be doing, if you come in tight here, we're gonna be swapping the R17 resistor with a 56 ohm. We're gonna be swapping the 100 uh, R100 with uh, 36. I think it's 0.5. I apologize, 30, uh, 0 0.5. And then lastly, we're going to be swapping this fan. 0 0.3. 0 0.3. And 0 .3. then. 0.3. Okay, so this one is 56 ohms. Yep. This one is 0 0.3 ohms. 4.3. Okay, 4.3 ohms. And lastly, we're swapping a jumper over on. It was. R two one twenty six, right? Yeah, one R one twenty six. So this will be our third one, and this basically we're gonna jump here. So we're gonna eliminate this uh, resistance here and just make that a jumper. So we bought these these in the strips. They're pretty inexpensive. It's a good solution. Um, I'm just gonna cut this open. Uh, I don't know if we got scissors or something, Spencer. So we've got my fifty six ohm resistor and it's going to be going on to this component right here now instead of using the new new solder what we're going to do is we're going to flux that and in, in hopes that the existing solder from the current resistor grabs onto this resistor and so then instead of having to remove that a current component we're by, we're bypassing it with the path of least resistance so it's going to go around that previous resistor here so let me let me just pull this off here we're going to uh, put some flux on there. I, I'm a fan of like liquid flux, but Spencer, Spencer, you've been using like the Kingbow and the paste. What do you mm. like better, the liquid flux or the paste? Um, the, I don't know, uh, the, the liquid flux is kind of nice. Yeah, I like the liquid flux myself. We got lots of flux on there now, and the flux will cook off. You know, actually a pro tip, a lot of people don't know this. The flux is really good, at, uh, the flux is really good at fixing oxidization and corrosion. So if you have, um, if you have like an iPhone or a MacBook or something that's gotten some moisture or some liquid on it, you can flux out that board, heat it up, and that'll actually help that those copper traces and things kind of regenerate in a literal fashion. Um, so we're gonna bring our hot, hot air gun up to temperature. So this is called a rework station. Um, this is something I use a lot for like motherboard and physical repair like this. Uh, we've got a very small tip on the end here so we can keep the heat located to one little area. Um, I think, let's see here. There we go, we are up to temperature. So let me flip this over. Now these are not directional, so it's not gonna matter which direction you put these on. They're reversible in a sense. What we're gonna try to do is allow that to solder itself into place. Oh, nope, it came off. Might have a little too much air pressure there. Now the difficulty is when things are hot, you wanna be really careful because that's when you can knock components off. So I'm not worried about knocking this component off, I'm worried about knocking the other components off. So. Okay, so that's in the right place. 
we're gonna turn our air pressure down to about 40 percent. So you'll be able to tell the solder's turned liquid. It gets really shiny all of a sudden. Um, so it's kind of flat matte, and then all of a sudden it'll it'll get a real sheen to it. And that's when the, the solder's starting to liquefy. So now we'll come in on this side. Okay, now we'll do our jumper. This is our last one. So R13. So this is, this is basically just a wire. This is a zero resistance uh, resistor. So this is basically a pass-through. So when you think of these, think of these as like uh, basically a wire. So instead of using these, you can actually use solder. Uh, but in this case, we're actually gonna be removing one of these components and replacing it with this one. So our 126 is coming off. Towards you. Towards the, the sliding door. Right it's almost off. Almost there. There we go. So now it's lifted. So now what you're going to do is you're going to replace that with either a bead of solder, where that used to be, or we're going to swap it with um, a zero zero, which is this guy right here, right, Spencer? Yeah. So you want to place that one on there. So we're going to hit that with a little flux. Okay, now Spencer's going to insert a zero ohm resistor into that existing slot. So instead of just using solder, he's going to uh, actually replace it with an additional component, a little more professional, but uh, literally same idea. You're a real close person. Is, is it interfering with anything else? Doesn't look like it. <laughs> Looks good to, for me. Looks good to me, sorry, Spencer. Okay, so let's look. So 126, so let's roll that down and get it heating it up. So that's gonna heat up and that's gonna solder itself into place with that existing solder. And then we'll be good to go. I'm gonna hit just a little more flux. Hit above it though, like up high. Below it, above it. And that should retain. And so, like I said, we've just swapped those two right there. And we've just now swapped that one right there. So that's it, guys. That's how you modify to and upgrade your uh, S19J Pro and other S19 power supplies. So the unit has been finished. Um, we've got both those units soldered right here, as you can see. So we've swapped out the R117 and the R100. And we also went ahead and swapped out R126 with a zero ohm resistor. So that's how to do a fan infrared rework machine as is necessary. This is a hot rework station. We're using the OU. And uh, now I'm gonna go for a walk.